Alright, short, quick, geeky one here. Going to lab the demonstration of the storage volumes in Docker containers. So, uh, one of the things that happens when you fire up a Docker container is in the volume description, if you specify a volume that doesn't exist, one will be made. Um, one of the cool things about Docker containers is the illusion of uh, a continuity, of persistence between updates. And that is because of the way it stores any, any persistent data. Uh, it creates a volume that exists uh, as a shared space in the, the root of the Docker container folder. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that here going forward here. It, so just let's do this. So we uh, SSH into the container here. All right, let's just do a, both of these. Good, good, good. So, let's uh, this is a cool command. This will not work. It doesn't exist. Correct. It doesn't exist yet. And then this down here, this is going to be um, bum 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 bum. That's what I was seeing. I typed the one on the top wrong. There we go. This actually needs to be a hyphen because this is a folder. So in the root directory of the uh, server here, in this ser in this in the server. In the root directory, I've got a folder called Docker Pods for the Docker Pods. Imagine that. And the pod named PyHole um, currently doesn't even exist, and especially the directory inside of PyHole called Etsy PyHole also doesn't exist yet. So what's going to happen is I'm going to install um, PyHole using a single script here. Um, let's okay. And I will use Nano, which is the greatest file editor of all time. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, grab that script. This script will be on my GitHub for ease of access with a good copy pasta. And then let's uh, make this. Bleh executable and then let's execute it so here's what's going to happen as soon as I execute this um, it's going to do some things and towards the end of that it will 
create a Docker container using a a form using a, a Docker Compose form, a YAML file, and as it creates that, two folders will be created in these two directories that I'm currently watching. They will fill up with actual files, and those files exist in two places. Those files exist on the server, which is where these the win the context of these windows here. Let's let's color these a little bit differently. There we go. Let's make this the blue. So these here on the left, um, their context is they are the server looking at directories that are in the server. And what we're going to do is the blue window on the right, as soon as it's done installing, I will exec into the container. So the context of the one will be in the container. And you'll see that the directories outside of the container are mirrored inside the container. The reason that's important is because the container can be blown away anytime. It can it can fail. It can be restarted. It can be refreshed. It can be grabbed. Uh, you know, a brand new fresh copy. This one killed and restarted, and there will be no change in the service like, except for the actual transition time. But there's no need to uh, reinstall anything. That's the beauty of the containers. They're running all the time. They never need to be installed because they are created as a running. Uh, image it, it's a it's awesome this is this is the magic of cloud here okay here we go so you'll see to the there will be some the the blue stuff is uh, when when docker actually starts running when it starts doing you doing something Here we go, here we go. These directories on the left should fill up here momentarily. There we go, look at that. Look at that as, they, as they're built. Interesting, I think I must have spelled one on the bottom wrong. Let's see, did I? Pox, Docker Pox. Why didn't you guys tell me? Did I completely bogus this here? So, these two windows are doing a watch inside those directories. Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to exec into the um, container. If I can find my uh, script here. There we go. Okay. I am still studying Docker. This is all done basically to uh, just kind of familiarize myself with these. And as I do so, I figure if I'm curious about how this works, and I think this is really interesting, maybe some other folks do too. I believe Pihole is the name of the image yeah pie hole okay so 
So what you do is you do type docker exec. That stands for interactive. And here we give the name of the container and then the command. There we go. This is the context I'm in right now is inside the container here. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to cd into slash etc slash pi hole. And we're going to look at this. This is the exact thing. Now watch this. Let's touch one test file. Boom. Notice one test file popped up on the left hand side. That's because the file inside the pie hole is this file outside the pie hole. This is interesting. Really cool because let's go ahead and let's uh, Cool, and let's there we go. So the reason this is cool is because my uh, my lab here, uh, my Pi hole died. I was actually running it on a Raspberry Pi, and I guess the uh, SD card. I got a pretty high end SD card, and it still died on me. Uh, well, not SD card, a, a USB. So <laughs> I'm changing that to run off of a, an external SSD. Um, for other projects, but in the meantime, I'm moving it off of my Raspberry Pi entirely, and I'll be running my Pi hole inside of my Proxmox along with my other virtual machines, and I'll be setting this up as a highly available cluster. Um, sub one and sub two there are going to be the number one and number two Pi holes, and on uh, Kate's Prime there, I'll be running a load balancer of some sort. Um, Kate's Prime will also run Kubernetes and probably Ansible, um, which will work on the rest of the automation in uh, the home lab here in the network. So this was just a demonstration of kind of how uh, the, the, the mounting, uh, just real quick, the, the script here that we were looking at inside of the Docker container relevant passages turn your hin files to page right here so this is the uh, this is the, the the git account this is the file on git and right here is the magic that we just saw this mounted slash in the host is on this side, and in the guest, the actual uh, Docker container is on this side. So on the host, we had etc pi hole and etc DNS mask. Inside the folder that hosts this Docker, con the, the, this manifest that uh, institutes the Docker when run through um, Docker Compose. So when I need to update this, say there's a, I mean, I could have a script daily, just go out and grab the most current image of pie hole and throw it on to this, this uh, Docker container here. And as long as this, these two folders match up with what's already existing, the pie hole will just continue to run and it, it doesn't know that it was ever down. It, it, it'll just keep running because uh, everything that uh, it, its memory basically is is externalized here. It has no internal memory. It's read only. When it changes, it changes. If those two files don't change, its memory doesn't change. It doesn't know anything was different. So, have a great one, guys. Peace.